Today we are going to talk about uh, part exams, especially open questions. Uh, we are going to do a couple videos about part exams, like for example, the framework to answer part exams questions, some mock interviews. But uh, today, uh, this is the most common mistakes I encounter when I mock interview other people. People go to an open question, try to find a closed answer. That is the biggest mistake, and I want to point it out. Okay, so there are a few principles about uh, answering open questions. The first principle is uh, it should be a communication. The ideal uh, ratio of how much you talk versus how much the interviewer talk should be about two to one or three to one. But uh, I often see candidates, their ratio is 10 to one or even more, right? Uh, they keep talking and they don't stop. Uh, this, this should be a back and forth communication. When you speak three sentences, the interviewer should give you a uh, license his back. The second principle is uh, you need to clarify the what and the why before you go to the how. I see people dive into the how too quickly, so they just show off their technical skills, but they are not really solving the real business problem. And uh, the third uh, principle is there is no right or wrong. There is only trade-offs. And that's why it is an open question. If, it's, if there is a right answer, then it's a closed question is not an open question, and then it's not a product question. In our textbook or in our exams, there is a right answer and a perfect answer, but that's not the case in reality. So in real work, it's all about trade-offs. So I'm going to give an example to illustrate uh, those three points. I'm actually going to give two examples, one uh, our everyday example and two a real product sense question example. The real, uh, the everyday example is, for example, if I want to have you arrange a dinner uh, for me, how would you do that, right? That is an open question, like there is no right or wrong answer, and uh, you need to clarify the what and the why before you do the how, and you want this to be a communication. Like the first question you need to ask me, how many people are there, right? What is the purpose of this uh, dinner and uh, what is the budget of this dinner? What is everyone's preference? And then you uh, search, you use our tools to do the searching and uh, you try to solve this problem and you try to uh, arrange a good dinner for everyone. But you are not going to just, you know, I know this fancy restaurant that is going to solve all the problems and I'm going to recommend this restaurant to you. This action of recommending one restaurant to all the problems sounds silly in real life but uh, that's what people do in product question interviews. The a real example of product sense interview is, for example, if I ask you, what is the percentage of fake news on Facebook? Then how do you go about answering that? Uh, a typical wrong answer I hear when I do mock interviews is uh, people will first define what is fake news, and then they uh, define the methodology they want to use to detect fake news and then to solve fake news. Uh, why is that a wrong answer? Be because going back to principle number three, it's about trade-offs. And number two, it's about what and how. Like for example, why do I need to understand the ratio of fake news? The answer can be very different if you have a large team to address the problem of fake news versus you only have two people, right? If you have two, two people in real work, you won't be able to implement a large machine learning model to address all the fake news out there. And uh, today, Facebook haven't addressed the fake news problem completely, so it is not uh, just solvable by a candidate uh, like you, right? It's like, if you can provide the magical answer, you won't be sitting here uh, doing the interviews. You'll be rich uh, already. And also the business problem matters. For example, if the business question is to have Mark Zuckerberg appear in front of Congress. <laughs> Hi, Kimmy. Hi. Say bye to the camp. Bye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if the business question is uh, for Mark to appear in front of Congress to call this number, then you probably need this number very quickly and uh, very truthfully. And uh, you need to gauge the definition of fake news by Congress definition, not by some technical definition. If your job is to uh, start a team to address this fake news problem, then you also need to know how much resource is uh, invested. And uh, uh, for example, what is the damage of fake news to people? Then you can start from the uh, most impactful area of uh, problems. 
these are all crucial information just like in the restaurant example like how many people and uh, what is the budget you can get this answer by communicating with our interviewer and that is a good signal because it shows you care about addressing the problem and you care about addressing the real business problem and that shows you are a good uh, uh, colleague and a good teammate so I'll give you just give you an example of uh, my answer. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it shows uh, how I think about this uh, kind of uh, questions. So my first question to the interviewer is, what is the purpose of this question? What am I trying to do here? Okay, my uh, interviewer tell me we just some VP, for example, just wants a number, uh, and uh, I'll ask him how much resource do I have? Uh, probably three people, uh, and. Uh, probably a week or two, as soon as possible. The my third question is, do I have access to a lot of data? He told me, you can assume uh, that you have access to uh, most of Facebook's data. Maybe you won't be able to have it in real work, but uh, for the sake of interview, you can imagine that. Okay, uh, then the problem became solvable, and uh, uh, the second video, I will talk about how to use the framework to solve this kind of problem, but uh, let's assume I use the framework and I find the most uh, important question to address, which is the definition of fake news, because that is a big definition and it also can change drastically if you change the definition of fake news. My first question is, let's find the definition. On parallel, if you dive into the house too quickly, you can have a lot of wrong answers for the definition of fake news, because it's not correlated to our business question. For example, the typical wrong answers I see are, uh, if you contain certain keywords, then it's a fake news. If it is spread too quickly, it's a fake news. If a lot of people report it's a fake news, then it's a fake news. You can easily find the counter examples why these answers can be wrong at different conditions. Okay, then we align on the definition of fake news. Again, it's a communication. Communication is not only important and shows how you care, but also gives you a foundation to build your next answer. You communicate it, you agree, okay, this is the definition of fake news we use. It's a mutual agreement. We can start on this uh, foundation. And then the next important question is how to find the ratio? My answer to him is because the constraint of a resource and the constraint of time, the best solution given the constraint is let's do a random sampling of the other information and let's just use human to tag at the beginning. Then we can go to the discussion of how to do random sampling and how much sample is required and uh, how, ma how, how much uh, resource do I need to do the tagging. And that is a uh, good conversation in the interview. It shows me my uh, practical experiences and uh, how I, my scientific way of uh, addressing the problem. And uh, we, then we landed the answer, like uh, this is how much time and resources uh, needed. Because of the importance of this question, we can get the resource from somewhere and we can do the tagging. And then we can expand. We already mutually agreed on the definition of fake news and we have a sample. And if we want to solve it from there, for example, we already have the uh, discussion with VP and VP decided okay this is a real problem and we need to have more investment and we can start from the sample and do machine learning and my interview expand to my technical expertise like for example I then classify problem of detecting and addressing fake news to two kind of uh, classification model one is you can classify based on content and two you can classify based on source like where does it come from and uh, what is in the content and then we we'll have some uh, deep discussion uh, of how to use machine learning and based on our sample to build a system of uh, tagging and uh, auditing and then uh, use reinforcement learning to address the problem. That's the example of how we uh, answer open question in Parkinson's interview. I hope by now you already have a good understanding of the three principles, the importance of communication, uh, that you have to clarify the what and the why and the underlying business problem before you dive into the house. And three, it's all about trade-offs, identifying the trade-offs instead of uh, trying to come up with a, a right answer. The core is, this is an open question. There is no closed answer. Okay, this is all. I uh, hope this video helps. And uh, if you have any questions or discussions, uh, please in, uh, leave in the comments. I'm really happy to discuss this uh, with you and uh, make my future videos more useful to you. Thank you.